The following video is not made for kids. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello to my subscribers, this is the TFN Geek coming to you with what will hopefully be a quick and successful review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the latest Transformers figure to be released in the Studio Series Gamer Edition line. line. That being the generic Decepticon Soldier. So, yeah, these guys were basically the uh, equivalent of the Viacons from Transformers Prime, uh, the Stormtroopers from the Star Wars franchise, if you will. And these were basically the cannon fodder for Megatron's forces in the Transformers video games by High Moon Studios. Uh, the action figure from other reviews I've seen, it is pretty accurate, and the box art here on the front of the box is near identical to the soldier's appearance in the uh, actual video games themselves. Um, I. Uh, I do have to admit, I do love the generic uh, um, visor helmet that looks almost like a medieval knight's, knight's helmet that the soldiers have. So yeah, they don't have any personalities. These, they don't have individual names. They're just Decepticon uh, troopers. And I believe one of them in the video game actually uh, asked Megatron why they were doing something and Thing and it was a type of question that uh, it got Megatron so mad he actually blasts the soul soldier and kills him right after he the soldier asked the asked why they were uh, hunting down the Autobots. I think it was I can't quite remember off the top of my head, but yeah, one of the soldiers does get blasted to death by Megatron after uh, questioning Megatron's orders. So yeah, one so one soldier is easy to replace based on the next one, and so that's a. Uh, uh, pretty much it, so one could argue that uh, this is the latest Transformers action figure that you could army build and buy multiple copies of copies if you wanted. I thought this was going to be an entirely brand new mold, but recently I found out that this is actually an extensive retool of the uh, Studio Series Gamer Edition Barricade figure, which unfortunately Barricade is my one of my least favorite uh, Studio Series Transformers figures. Yeah, he might actually be my least favorite of, out of all of them now that I Pause to think about it. About it, but uh, yeah, there is potential to army build this figure if you want to. So there it is on the box. Some artwork of the uh, robot mode. Oh, and that was the thing with the uh, War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron uh, video games. They were primarily a, a shooter type video game. So the Transformers characters were most often times throughout the video games they would just be running around, uh, uh, staying transformed in robot mode. They would only transform into vehicle mode if they had to go across. Uh, uh, rough terrain or across a battlefield that required uh, dodging laser guns that they couldn't uh, do if they were in robot mode. Oh, so the vehicle mode modes are uh, were uh, seen uh, less often. And so the point I was trying to make is that um, it's um, very appropriate and ironic that the uh, all the box art for the uh, Gamer Edition Transformers figure shows the robot modes and not the vehicle modes for these characters. Around here to the back of the box, you've got uh, uh, product photos, you've got the robot mode and the alt mode. Oh, and as far as what type of vehicle the Decepticon Soldier is supposed to be, I think it's like the equivalent of a U.S. Army Jeep. It's an all-terrain vehicle, vehicle designed to traverse the uh, surface, the various surfaces of planet Cybertron, even though there isn't much of a clearance space underneath it. Beneath it. So if you can imagine what a Jeep would look like, Look like in the look like a hundred or five hundred years in the future from now, but ironically, five mil, at least five million years in the past. That's what the Decepticon soldiers' vehicle mode is so supposed to be. The one sentence bio reads: "The Decepticon soldiers capture the Autobots and transport them to Kaon Prison." So yeah, these guys are are the uh, cannon fodder who fight the Autobots and bring them to uh, the city of Kaon, where they're tortured and. Orchard to death, and so. Oh, um, they have the uh, grunt work of Megatron soldiers, so. Um, since they don't have much personalities, uh, it's easy for them to do the more uh, horrendous uh, acts for the Decepticons, uh, a goal of conquering the Autobots and Cybertron. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the uh, uh, Gamer Edition Decepticon Soldier, so. Without further delay, let's get this guy out of his box and take a close look at him in robot mode. Alright, so here is the Decepticon soldier out of the box and transformed into his robot mode. And um, the hip joint joins, um, well, they, uh, 
Well, they are ball joints, so there isn't much articulation to them. But that being said, uh, you can see right, see right there by just moving it back and forth around. It is wobbly, wobbly. Um, it's a bit of a mess. And then the back kib, the back kibble right here, which ends up on the back of the legs. This uh, these actually are the heel spurs for the feet. Each, so it's almost like uh, the Decepticon soldiers are wearing a. Wearing a shield armor on the bottom half of their legs, so it's a uh, it's a very uh, uh, clunky uh, robot mode. A lot owed a lot of kibble, and I can now that I have it in hand, I can see the retooling from uh, Gamer Edition Barricade. I, I apologize for not having Barricade out for a size comparison, and but uh, considering that this is just a generic. Uh, Eric Decepticon Soldier, I didn't feel the need for it. Another thing to note about the back kibble here on the legs is that officially uh, you're supposed to put this panel down here and then there's this little ta uh, notch that this tab uh, sits inside of. I apologize if I got those reversed. But it doesn't lock into place, it just hangs there off the back. And it's the same with the uh, side armor for the legs. Uh, legs. There's a tiny little uh, rectangular tab right there that I'm pointing at with my finger and it's supposed to go into this slot right here when you transform this thing into robot mode but nothing tabs into place too well Ella, there would be a decent amount of articulation in the arms if this enormous backpack wasn't here and when i took the figure out of the box the backpack fell off so oh uh um the figure unfortunately it's not much of an improvement over barricade over gamer edition barricade pretty much all it has going going forward in terms of uh New molding and molding and such is the uh, alt mode being uh, more like a Jeep, whereas Barricade was more like the uh, Batmobile. You know, more than anything else, it looked almost like a what you would think an evil science fictional police car would be. The Decepticon soldiers are evil uh, science fictional Jeeps with the uh, mostly uh, mostly uh, uh, gold, gold and gray, gold and gray uh, paint job. But yeah, speaking of this gray paint job, uh, it's almost like the uh, muted gray that's seen on parts of Transformers figures where there isn't supposed to be much color. So this is, while this is accurate to the uh, paint job that the uh, characters had in the video games, it's one of the blandest and most boring looking paint jobs that a Transformers action figure could have. So uh, this figure isn't one of the more interesting figures, unfortunately. But I do have to admit... Um, Ironically, I do enjoy the head sculpt, how it's just like a generic uh, triangle-shaped visor. It reminds me of a medieval knight's helmet. But I do like that because it shows that these guys are just generic soldiers. They aren't individuals with individuals who are supposed to have any uh, personalities. And then uh, the main gripe I have with this figure is that here's the uh, laser gun that comes for the Decepticon soldier. And yeah, that is the connection for this thing. It's a 5 millimeter your port and the only way to attach it is to remove the right side arm and attach the laser gun to the el elbow joint and so once again like all the previous gamer editions st studio series transformers figures figures just figures in a callback to the video games themselves the you know, if you swap out the right side arm for the weapon to make it look like the arm itself has transformed into the weapon and so I really, really wish that Hasbro and Dakar told me the designers will finally give Transformers fans and collectors the option of either swapping out the arms or not. I wish there would have been a 5mm peg on the bottom of this thing. Um, ironically, the hands on the Decept on the Gamer Edition Decepticon soldiers, the hands themselves are 5mm compatible, so if you have any uh, spare laser guns that you would like to give this figure if you want, and it can, he can hold uh, standard 5mm weapons. I've been so yeah, I kind of wish they would have uh, given us that uh, option of either having having it hold the weapon in the hand like this, or swapping it out for the arm. Not just one option. And so hopefully Hasbro and Dakaratomi will finally hear the complaints of Transformers collectors and give us uh, give us uh, the option, different options for the Gamer Edition uh, Transformers figures. Um, as far as articulation goes, um, the arms are attached on ball joints at the shoulders, so. They have the potential to spin 360 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise. 
but if you spin the arms backwards, this enormous backpack is going to get in the way. You have a bicep swivel right above the elbow. The elbows are both on hinge joints. Points, uh, the, arm, the hands are on uh, ball joints, but they can only go up and down a tiny bit, as you can see right there. But they can spin 360 degrees, ease in both directions. And uh, that's partially due to how they transform when you transform the figure into alt mode. Uh, it does have a, a waist joint, a swivel joint in the waist. Haste. But if you try and turn the swivel joint while you're holding on to the bottom of the legs instead of the waist itself, Alpha. The, the joints that are the loosest, at least on this copy of this figure, are the uh, ball joints at the hips, so there's a chance that you could uh, end up doing it like that if you try to use the waist joint while holding onto the legs instead of the waist itself. Uh, you have a swivel joint in the thigh, but because of the, again, the kibble on the back of the leg, uh, trying to sprawl the legs outward, this armor is going to hit itself, so the articulation has the potential to work well, but if it wasn't for all the kibble from the vehicle mode oh, uh, oh it would uh, be a lot more than it actually is uh, the knee joint can go almost 90 degrees since there's uh, the backpack is sits just barely high enough that the leg kibble doesn't actually uh, actually hit it and then the feet go can't really go anywhere they just uh, move slightly up and down but that's due to transformation so that's pretty much it for robot mo oh to this figure uh, Gear. Um, with all this kibble around it, it almost feels like a shell for armor than uh, an actual transformer because it armor with everything. Sorry about that. I had to help my family with some something. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is for this guy in robot mode. So let's get him transformed into alt mode and wrap up the review. All right. So here is the Studio Series Gamer Edition Decepticon Soldier transformed into the alt mode. And again, it's... Uh, like most of the designs from the War for Cybertron line, it's a science fictional car. But like I said, uh, and, uh, since the tires uh, give the illusion of being elevated and it's uh, fairly small and with the gold and silver uh, uh, paint job, uh, my my impression looking at this is that it's what a science fictional Jeep would look like. Ike, so I think that's what the... Uh, video game designers were going for. As far as paint apps go, uh, they're all muted. There's no uh, uh, prominent colors on here. You've got purple for the headlights. Then you've got the gold and silver over over paint apps around, apps around the top of the vehicle. You've got some purple striping right there. Then you've got purple uh, a purple outline where I'm separating the hubcap from the tires. Tires up. you got a it's very hard to tell. My camera can't quite pick it up. Uh, there's a good angle. You've got a Decepticon logo here on the back of the vehicle. Vehicle, And I wish Hasbro and Decartomi would uh, go back to doing uh, faction symbols that have outlines to them because it makes them easier to spot. Uh, and it doesn't, you don't have to strain your eyes trying to find it. Um, I'm sorry I didn't share, share it, but uh, there is a, a Decepticon lo logo on the front chest of the robot mode. Uh, transformation is a uh, pretty simple. Again, it feels more like a shell, a shell former than an actual uh, transformer. With most of the vehicle mode parts hanging off the robot mode as kibble. Pretty much the only parts of the vehicle that are formed from the actual robot mode are the uh, uh, lower legs forming the front middle uh, middle of the bumper and the robot mode arms forming the uh, what would be side doors if human if humans were be it, had a way of getting in and out of a vehicle like this. Yes, um, it does roll um, fairly well, or the wheels spin in well, well on my hand. Um, as far as spinning on a flat surface, uh, let me get the box. Yeah, so depending on the type of surface, the wheels, um, depending on how much force you apply to them, I th the wheels spin somewhat well, but not entirely the best. And again, this figure is a retool of the uh, Gamer Edition Barricade figure, so um, in vehicle mode, it is somewhat of a bulky vehicle, especially compared to some of the deluxe figures that have recently been released in the Legacy line, but there's a lot of hollowed parts to it, like 
turning it upside down and looking here on the interior, all the wheels are all hollowed out. Out there's a couple of hollow parts here and there and some gaps. Yep, so um, even though it's big, there's not much heft. There's not much heft to it. If I have uh, handled a couple of deluxe figures that are slightly smaller than this one, but they had more uh, weight to them since they had more, since they were made out of uh, more had more solid uh, plastic bits to them. Um, so as um, far as uh, deluxe class transformers go, um, oh uh, the Studio Series Gamer Edition uh, Decepticon Soldier. Um, well, that kind of uh, I'm kind of going into the uh, final uh, question of the review. Do I recommend getting this figure and adding it to your Transformers collection? I only recommend getting the uh, Decepticon Soldier if you're a fan of the uh, War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron video games and you uh, like the design of the vehicle mode. Oh, then uh, this isn't then this figure is one that I'd recommend for your collection. But if you're not a fan of the Studio Series Gamer Edition line. Uh, the Gamer Edition line right now has a reputation of having the worst action figures out of the entire Studio Series line. I mean, so if you haven't been gotten into Studio Series Gamer Edition figures, then even though this figure is a better use of the mold than the original version, which was Barricade, uh, then this figure can be an easy pass. As, um, as far as um, how great of a figure that figure this one is, uh, in terms of deluxe class Transformers figures here, it's not the worst, but it's not the greatest either. So I'd say it's a mediocre Transformers action figure. Thank you. Uh, most often times when I when Hasbro and Cartomi release characters that are army builders, uh, four or five, I've are numbers that I t typically uh, tend to collect. But for this one, you know, for, with all the kibble and robot mode. Um, that it has uh, the vehicle mode i do admit is impressive and for me personally uh, this right here the vehicle mode is the superior of the two modes modes that this uh transformers figure ha has going for it all right so uh when the vehicle mode is better than the robot mode oh uh, typically uh yeah those are transformers action figures that get a lot of mixed reviews from fans and collectors collectors because most often times uh, collectors will uh Transform a Transformers action figure into robot mode, keep it in robot mode, and put it up on a display show uh, where it remains standing in robot mode. It's very rare when uh, collectors display their Transformers action figures transformed into vehicle mode since uh, a vehicle mode uh, takes, up, takes up more um, surface space on shelves than robot mode does. Uh, so for action figures like this, like the Studio Series Gamer Edition Decepticon Soldier where the alt mode is... Uh, shines better than the robot mode does. It's one that uh, a lot of collectors probably will pass up on. And I've already seen on Amazon.com, uh, the retail price for this figure is $24.99, but it's on sale right now at Amazon for $19.99. So there's already enough copies that are uh, starting to uh, shelf warm, or at least, in, at, least at Amazon's uh, facility, that it's warranted a $5 price drop already. Eddie, so it wouldn't surprise me in the coming weeks or months while this figure is on the shelves of retail stores such as uh, Walmart and Target stores here in the United States. It wouldn't surprise me if uh, the Studio Series Gamer Edition Decepticon Soldier ends up being one of the figures that shelf warms uh, enough that uh, it goes on discount clearance price. Um, I said what I was going for a moment ago with ar the number of copies of an army building character that I add to my Transformers collection. Uh, so far, I've... Uh, Arm, only Army built uh, two copies of this figure, and after transforming it from robot mode to vehicle mode, I haven't transformed it from vehicle mode back to robot mode yet, but my overall impression with this figure, figure is that the number of uh, pros and cons are evened out, so I think two, if you want to Army build this figure like I did, uh, two copies is, is uh, more than enough, uh, I believe. Eve, so that's pretty much it. It, uh, this is not one of the greatest Transformers action figures, but it's not one of the worst. It's literally right in the middle where it's a mediocre level Transformers action figure. So this has been my review of the Transformers Studio Series Gamer Edition Decepticon Soldier. I recommend getting this figure if you're a fan of the uh, War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron video game designs. But if you're not, then this figure can be an 
easy pass, especially considering that it's just a generic Decepticon soldier with no uh, personality. It's just Megatron's uh, cannon fodder. Otter sent to try and uh, fight the Autobots, and they're the ones who get blown up all the time. I am so. Thank you to all my subscribers for your continued support, and thank you to all my friends. Ends for your support as well. L, and so until next time, you guys, this has been the TF Fan Geek, and remember, Ember to please like, comment, and subscribe. Stay safe, stay healthy. Transform and roll out. Goodbye, everyone.